Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's go ahead and tackle the bridge circuit, the good old fashioned bridge circuit with this mesh analysis by inspection. It turns out the mesh analysis by inspection method is perfect for something like the bridge circuit, which otherwise is a very difficult circuit to solve. So let's go ahead and use our normal methodology. The first thing we do is assign mesh currents to the three meshes. There are three loops here, three meshes. The first one, let's call it the second one, I1, I2, and the third one, I3. All right. That means there's three unknowns, we'll end up with a three by three matrix. The next step is to find the resistance matrix elements. We know that the matrix is going to look something like this, a three by three matrix times the three unknown currents, I1, I2, and I3, and that's going to be equal to the voltages that we find when we sum up all the voltage sources going around each of the loops. But let's first find the uh, resistance matrix elements. We begin with the diagonal elements, which means we need to find R11 and R3. R3. That means we need to add up all the resistances around each loop. loop. Loop 1 or mesh 1, we have a total of 20 plus 10. Around loop 2, we have 20 plus 30 plus 5, which is 55. And around the third loop, 10 plus 5 plus 5 to 20. That means the three diagonal elements are 30, 55, and 20. Now we need to find the off diagonal elements. We need to find R12, which is the same as R21. So 1 and 2 share a single resistor, 20 ohms. We need to put a negative in front of that. That's minus 20, which means that this becomes a minus 20 and this becomes a minus 20. Next, we want to find R13, which is the same as R31. What is 1 and 3? What is common between 1 and 3? It's a 10 ohm resistor. We put down a minus 10 minus 10, minus 10. And finally, we need to find the R23, which is the same as R32, which is equal to the resistor shared by those two loops. Put a negative in front of that, that's minus 5, minus 5, and minus 5. So now we have all nine elements in the resistor matrix. We still need to find the voltages for the three loops. When we go around the first loop in the same direction as the current, we go from the negative to the positive end of the voltage source, that's a plus 100 volts. But the other two loops do not have any voltage sources, so we plug two zeros in. We're now ready to start solving for the three unknowns, I1, I2, and I3. Let's use the determinant method, which means we take this matrix right here. We say determinant is equal to, and yes, let me put it right here. And uh, that is equal to uh, 30, 20. And then we repeat two more columns, 20 30 minus 10 and minus 20, 50. And so what we're going to do here, and using color helps, is by multiplying these elements together, diagonally like this, we add them all together, and then we subtract when we multiply these elements together in this direction. All right, let's go ahead and do that. The calculator definitely comes in handy here. So 30 times 20 is 600 times 55. 600 times 55 gives us 33,000. Then we, let's see, we add the product of this, but there's three negatives. That means we subtract 1,000 minus 1,000, and that's equals. And then here, that's, um, we add, in this case, oh, make sure I don't make mistakes like this. This is a minus. All right, I forgot the minus here. We have to really be careful to make sure we don't make those kind of mistakes. And then it looks like three negative signs, so I subtract 1,000 again. And then I subtract the product of these. Notice there's two negative signs, they cancel out, so I subtract 100 times 55, that's minus 5,500. Then I look at these, I see two negative signs, so I subtract 25 times 30, that's minus 750. And then I look at those, that's 20 times 20 is 400 times 20 is 8,000. I see two negative signs, that's plus, but I subtract that because it's in this direction, so minus 8,000 equals, and I end up with the determinant being equal to 16,750. All right, now we need to find the three matrices that belong to I1, I2, and I3. I'm gonna replace the column with the uh, voltages. To find the first matrix, this is equal to I repeat this matrix, but I replace this column by the voltages. I get 100, 0, and 0. 
I keep the other numbers, 55, 20, minus 5, minus 20, 20, and then I repeat those two columns again, 100, oh, zero, minus 20, five, 50, and minus 5. Again, using color, it makes it easier to do the multiplications. We're going to multiply these, plus those, plus those. Notice the zeros in here. I always like zeros when I do this because it does cancel out some of the terms. Then you subtract that product, this product, and this product. So let's go ahead and do that. 10 times 20, that's 1,000. Oh, that's 2,000. Times 55, that's 110,000. We subtract zero, we subtract zero. We subtract zero, we, oh, I should say, we add zero, really. Now here we subtract 100 times 25, that's 2,500, minus 2,500. And then we subtract zero again, so this matrix comes out to be 107,500. Quickly checking to make sure I didn't make a mistake. And yep, that looks good. All right, next one. Second matrix. Again, we copy this down, but now we replace the second column by these numbers right here, by the voltage elements, 30 minus 20, 20. Then we repeat the first two columns, 30 minus 10, 100, 0. That equals. Again, using color, makes it easier to see. We're going to this multiply and this and subtract. We multiply this and this. All right, let's go ahead and do that. There's a zero there, so that's zero. Here we have five times 10, even though the negative, they cancel out. That's 50 times 100, that's 5,000. And here we have a zero, minus zero, minus zero, and minus times a minus, that's a plus. That's 400 times 100, that's 4,000. That's 40,000 plus 40,000. That's 45,000 for this matrix. And finally, since I'm out of room here, I'll move over here. Matrix number three for I3. A little bit bigger. Again, we repeat these columns. 30 minus 0 and 0. And then repeat the first two columns. 30 minus 10 minus 25. All right. Again, I like to guide myself using these colors. I multiply these elements together. I add them together and I subtract when I multiply these elements together in this Still diagonal. Still plenty of zeros to cancel out, which is always good. Okay, the first diagonal, that's zero. The second diagonal is zero. The third diagonal, five times 20. The negatives cancel out. It's 100 times 100. That's 10,000. I subtract this, but I have a negative here that actually adds. So 10 times 100 is 1,000 times 55. That's plus 55,000. This is zero. That's zero. So this ends up being 65,000. Now I'm ready to find the currents I1, I2, and I3. I1 is equal to matrix 1 divided by the determinant. Matrix 1 right here was 107,500. I divide that by, and let's see. So we take 107,500 divided by 16,750 equals, I get 6.42 amps, 6.42 amps. I2 can be found by taking the second matrix divided by the determinant. The second matrix was 45,000 divided by 16,750. I know it's a lot of work, but just hang in there, and it's kind of nice when you finally get to find answers, divided by 16,750, and that would be 2.69 amps. And then for the third current, I3 is equal to, here we take the 65,000 divided by the determinant, which is 16,750. 3.88 amps. That's for I3. So we have I1, I2, and I3. Now let's take a look and see what we have here. Which means that in the main current here, the total current for the whole branch is 6.42 amps. So in this direction, we have 6.42 amps of current. Then the current splits up between the two branches. Notice that I2 in this direction, I2 would be 2.69 amps in this direction, 2.69 amps. But here, notice that I2 is in the opposite direction. So to find the current here, I need to then subtract the 2.69 from the 6.42. So to find the current here, I take 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6
and subtract from that the 2.69, which is in the clockwise direction, 2.69, and that gives me 3.73 amps in this direction. What about the cross the bridge here from the left to the right? Well, it's going to be, I'm going to write it as I sub B, I across the bridge. I across the bridge is equal to, notice that I3 is in the same direction, but I2 is in the opposite direction. That means it's I3 minus I2. In this case, I3 is equal to 3.88 amps. And subtract from that the 2.69 amps, 2.69. And so 3.88 minus 2.69, and that gives us 1.19 amps across the bridge. And then finally, we have I3 in this direction. I3 has 3.88 amps of current. But here, across a 10 ohm resistor, notice that we have the I1 in this direction, but I3 in the opposite direction. So this current will be I1 minus I3. I1 minus I3, I1 is equal to 6.42 amps, and subtract from that I3, which is 3.88 amps, which is equal to, that would be, well, let's just calculate it, 6.42 minus 3.88. But finally here we have 2.54 amps, then when you add this to this together, 2.54 plus 3.88 should add up back to 6.42. Here you can see that this mesh analysis by inspection very quickly sets up the equations, and then it's just a matter of doing matrix algebra to find the solution to the three currents. It's a really good method, a really powerful method, and it can be set up very, very quickly. I really like the mesh analysis by inspection method. It makes it a whole lot faster and easier to solve these types of problems. And that's how it's done. Forgot the arrow at the end. <laughs>